mystery house. Mystery House, that strange publishing firm owned by Dan and Barbara Glenn, where each new novel is acted out by the Mystery House staff before it is accepted for publication. Mystery House. Understand I'm going to be doing a very sinister character in tonight's Mystery House story, Barbie. You can say that again. Gives me the creeps. Mm. Complete with quartet, huh? That's the title. What does it mean? Why, haven't you ever seen advertisements for funeral homes in which the copy listed a price for funeral services complete with quartet? Oh. Uh, speaking of advertisements. Ah, uh, which is precisely what you're always doing, Tom. Right, Mr. Glenn. And here's a message from our sponsor. Okay, places, everybody. Set the scene, Tom. Complete with quartet. The scene opens in the reception room of the Renfron Funeral Home. Mr. Renfron, a polished, suave gentleman, has just come in and is greeting the nightman, Harry Canby, who doesn't look too wide awake. Well, did I wake you up, perhaps, Harry? Huh? Oh, uh, no, 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 boss. I've been awake all the time. You know, some night I will stay on the night shift just to see whether it's possible for you to look any more wide awake in the small hours of blackness than you do in the morning. Any, uh, business, Harry? Uh, Joe Graben brought in one of his boys, got hit with an automobile. Hit with an automobile? Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Any, uh, bullet wounds we must take care of on the corpse? No, this guy was really hit by a car. Straight goods, he said. Straight goods. That would be a refreshing novelty. I suppose, uh, Joe wanted the special funeral... Uh, the works, he says, even including the quartet. Hmm. An excellent customer, Mr. Graben. I wish we had a few more like him, buying in, uh, in quantity. The body is in the receiving room? Sure. You told me never to monkey with any of Graben's stiffs. Yes, I know. They sometimes require the delicate craftsmanship of a master. Well, let's take a look at this one. Uh, it's all right for me to go back with you. Uh, Betty ain't here to take over the switchboard yet. Hmm. She is a little too late too often. Oh, well, I doubt that Joe Graben's working this early in the morning. There will be no calls. Come along. In the receiving room, you said? Yes? Yeah. This uh, mangled one over against the wall? I, uh, uh, yeah, 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 that's the one, uh, but... But, uh, the other one... You said nothing about... There wasn't any other one, boss. Honest, just the one. This man on the table in the middle of the room. Who is he? Oh, i never seen him before in my life, boss. Honest, I... Shut up. Stand back. Hmm. He's been shot through the heart. Murdered, huh? No, no, no. He was probably playing with a cap pistol and it went off accidentally. You blundering idiot. Who brought this body in here? Nobody, boss. Well, from the extremely dead look of the gentleman... It's rather obvious that he did not walk in here alone. Somebody brought that body in here last night. You and I, we have to own the keys. I don't know a thing about it. Nah, I should have known better than to have a stupid, blundering idiot like you on night duty here. What am I going to do with this body? Maybe somebody will come in and claim it. You maybe... Don't tax my patience, Harry. Are people in the habit of claiming the bodies of murder victims? Would anyone admit bringing it in? No, maybe not at that. Harry... I think we're going to have a very private funeral. Huh? Somebody has entrusted this body to us for burial. Somebody who appreciates our skill and tact. Fortunately, we have another body. Oh, I don't get you, boss. A grave will have to be prepared for the other body. The funeral for Joe Graben's boy will not be until tomorrow. Tonight, we bury the stranger beneath the grave that Joe Graben's late friend will occupy tomorrow. Well, what good will that do? You mean saving the price of a cemetery lot? You moron. I mean that nobody would ever think of looking for a murdered man's body in the graveyard, particularly if the body is beneath another coffin. When they find one coffin in the grave, they look no further. You see, 
It's very simple. Yeah. Meanwhile, I have a little work to do, Harry. Uh, you mean fixing up Joe Graben's boy? No, that is a routine matter. Even you could handle it. No, no. I have a much bigger job. What? Determining who gets the bill for the most profitable funeral that we have ever conducted. Huh? Somebody who knows about the work I do for Joe Graben has selected me for the disposal of a body. I have been chosen as a goat. And somebody's going to pay very dearly for that choice, Harry. I'm going to play detective. I told the boy at the desk to tell you I wouldn't see you. I don't know you. Carl Renfron is the name. Perhaps you've heard of the Renfron Funeral Home. One of the finest in this part of the country. Beautiful chapel, pipe organ, and a special quartet for the deluxe service. What is this, a gag? If it is, it isn't very funny. My business is never very funny, Miss Dare. What do you want to mean? You sing in one of Joe Graben's nightclubs, yes? Sure, what of it? I suppose you read in the paper this morning about the disappearance of a handsome young detective. I don't read the papers. Get out of here. His name was Peter Harley, and he was working on a shake-up of the local underworld. How should I know anything about him? You had a date with him last night, after your last show. How do you know? That is neither here nor there. You were the last person to see him alive, as far as the police know. The cops? They know I had a date with him? Not yet. They won't know until I tell them. But you said you didn't want to cooperate with me. And so I'll have to tell them, of course. What do you want? Did you kill Peter Harley, Miss Dare? Did I? Hey, what is this anyway? He ain't dead. Huh. I would make a substantial wager on that. But you don't think I killed him? I had a date with the guy. If you will pardon my saying so, that hardly eliminates you as a murder suspect. Don't tell me you were madly in love with him. Your kind doesn't fall in love with anything except cash. I... I don't know whether I ought to tell you what it was all about or not. Then perhaps I'd better go to the police. No, no, I, I, I'll i tell you. That's better. He, uh, he wanted to get some dope on Joe Graben. Said he'd give me a hundred bucks for what I could tell him. I didn't plan on really telling him anything. You were interested in the hundred dollars. Sure, that's all. Why did you kill him, Miss Dare? I didn't kill him. If anybody killed him... Yes? Nothing. You make it very difficult for me, Miss Dare. The police. Okay. If anybody killed him, it was that new piano player at the club. You seem quite positive. Well, Harley didn't give me the hundred bucks. Said I was holding out on him. That if I wasn't careful, he'd have me thrown in the clink, the louse. He said, if there's any tip off on me, you get it, Marie. Yes? That doesn't seem to prove anything about the piano player. Well, he'd been sauntering over to the piano and talking to her all evening. And he had a date with me. She's new in the joint. What's her name? Where can I find her? Her name's Betty Lanning. What? Repeat it, please. Betty Lanning. Why? You want her address? No. I think I can find her without too much trouble. But what makes you think this Betty Lanning had something to do with his death? He left me here at my hotel. I was scared of what he said about the police and me giving a tip off to Joe Graben. I headed back to the elevator and then ducked out the side door and followed him. I was afraid he was going to tell the cops something about me. Where did he go? Well, he walked up a couple of blocks to a little all-night lunchroom, and Betty Lanning was there waiting for him. Thank you, my dear. You've been of great help to me. Perhaps I will give you the hundred dollars that Peter Harley refused to pay you. Oh, yeah, I just bet. You will come with me. It is a matter of establishing identity of the corpse beyond reasonable doubt. I ain't going anywhere with you. I don't even know you. You will, my dear. Of course... If you prefer to have an introduction to the police... Okay, okay, I'm coming. Say, you uh, got a real fancy place here. Yes. Yes, the classic beauty of Grecian architecture soothes the nerves of the bereaved. Right this way, my dear. Mr. Graben's been calling you about the body he... Oh? 
Surprised to see a fellow employee from the nightclub, Betty? Hey, wait a minute. You're the new piano player in the club. How come you're over... You must be mistaken. I work here. Oh, no, I ain't mistaken. You play the piano... I'm afraid bluffing won't do you much good, Betty. And uh, I want to apologize to you. Apologize? For what? Well, I thought you were rather lazy and shiftless the way you've been coming in late in the mornings, and here I discover you're holding down both a day and a night job. Rather admirable. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't deny it, my dear. I would be rather proud if, if I were you. Won't you show Miss Dare back to the receiving room, Betty? Uh, Miss Dare? But why? She wants to identify a, a friend. I, I... All right, but I don't have any key. I... I have. And I'm going with you. This way, Miss Dare. I'm surprised you didn't tell me about your other job, Betty. Just a minute. Show the body, Betty. It's this one over here that she's interested in. All right. All right. Ah, so you knew the man, too. You and Miss Dare both. You killed him. You'll never get away with this. I did not kill the man, but I really can't let you run around screaming that I did. You've been working for me and working for Joe Graben. <laughs> I wonder who else you're working for. I... What do you mean? I wonder if perhaps you might not be a spy. I wonder if you might not have put this man's body in here. You're insane. A man should know his employees better, Miss Lanning. I really think it's time for us to have a... Hot to hot talk. I've nothing to say to you. I have an idea you'll change your mind about that. Hello. Actually, I just assume you didn't. You'd make such a beautiful corpse. Well, you, you wouldn't dare kill me. You, hey, you. this is where I leave. I'm sorry, Miss Dear. I'll have to insist that you stay. Has uh, Harry left yet, Miss Lanning? No, he, he was cleaning the chapel. Oh, fine. I was afraid he might have gone. And he does so want some experience in embalming. Is Carl Renson actually going to kill Betty Lanning? And who killed Peter Harley, the detective? Why was his body left in the Renson funeral home? We'll find out in the second act of tonight's story. Meanwhile, here's news from your sponsor. The scene is the receiving room of the Renfun funeral home, and Harry Canby, Renfun's assistant, is arranging the embalming equipment. You haven't got the nerve. You wouldn't dare. If it was me, I wouldn't bet on that, sister. If I was you, I'd start talking. The start of the embalming process is very important, Harry. If you will uh, give me the needle, please. Well, you can't embalm a live person. You... Oh, a common misconception, Betty. On the contrary... Get away from me! Don't you dare touch me! Perhaps you're ready to talk now. I... What do you want? You're working with the police, I suppose. Working with this Peter Harley. Are you kidding? When I joke, you always see a smile on my lips. And my sense of humor is weak. I seldom joke. I was working for Lou Dana. Lou Dana? Why, he's Joe Graben's worst enemy. Sure. Some of Lou Dana's spies, his undercover boys... Began having accidents. And the accidents always turned up here. So Lou hired me to get a job here and tell him what was going on. Mr. Dana must be a smart man. He's smarter than you, Renfron. And smarter than Graben. I was giving him the dope every time a body came into this place from Graben. Yes, but this job of yours as a piano player. Graben never saw me here. His bodies always came in the back way. 
I was doing so well here, Lou got the idea of having me work at Graben's place, too. We were finding out everything Graben was doing. Hmm. Much smarter girl than I gave you credit for being, Miss Landy. And you better be careful how you treat me, too. Because Lou Dana's got enough on you to hang you. If I were in your place, Miss Landing, I should worry about my own neck. The police are going to be quite angry about Peter Harley. I didn't kill him. I was giving him all the dope on Graben's mob. The dope about Graben and you. Hmm, I suppose so. You know, Miss Landing, I find such disloyalty rather distressing. Miss Dare, what would you do if you were I, under such circumstances? You leave me out of this. I ain't playing. I should hate to think that Joe Graben would double-cross me in view of all that I've done for him. I bet Graben bumped off this Harley guy, boss. Well, of course he did. Probably had someone following Peter Harley and me. And when Graben finds out how Betty spilled everything she knew, he has his Harley fella erased. Hmm. Perhaps uh, you could contribute something to the conversation about now, Miss Dare. I, uh... I, I don't think Joe would do a thing like that. Oh, come now, Miss Dare. You told me you followed Harley and saw him meet Miss Lanning. You were angry because he hadn't given you the hundred dollars he had promised. Now, it isn't logical that you would let such an opportunity for revenge pass. So it was you who tipped off Graben, huh? Why, you dirty little... I ain't a stool pigeon or a double-crossing rat like you. Sure, I called Joe. Why wouldn't oh, I? Oh, you... Oh, please, you... please, ladies, please. This is hardly the place for such talk. We're in the presence of the dead. You know, Harry, this rather hurts me. Huh? Joe Graben, he's, he's been such a fine customer. And to think he tried to take advantage of me. Huh. I think we'll have to call him over here and uh, sever business relations. <laughs> What's the matter, Renfran? Cops making a fuss about the guy I brung in last night? Which one, Mr. Graben? What do you mean, which one? Oh, really, Mr. Graben, you hurt me deeply. I've always endeavored to give you the finest service. Funerals worthy of uh, much finer people than those that you have brought me. Everything has always been conducted on the highest plane. With the finest music, the most excellent caskets, beautiful flowers... Okay, okay, quit selling me. I ain't kicking... I paid you plenty, too. I never beefed on the prices. What's wrong with you? If you wanted a free funeral for one of your victims, why didn't you ask me? I don't like deceit and trickery, Mr. Graben. You're off your nut. I don't know what you're talking about. This uh, extra corpse you slipped in here last night, Mr. Graben. Are you crazy? I brought in one. Harry's seen me. I told him all about it. it wasn't even a hot job. Ah, but the one you brought with him, Mr. Graben, the one you neglected to report... You lie! Please, Mr. Graben. Perhaps uh, you'd like to see him. This way, please. I don't know nothing about it. One stiff I brought in. One. And if you think you're going to shake me down to pay for somebody else's corpse, you've got another thing coming. One moment, please. In here. Hello, Joe. Hey, what's it? Marie Dare and Betty. Say, what's going on here anyhow? One thing that's going on, Joe. We found out what a rat your new piano player is. Lou Dana she was working for, spying on oh, you. Oh, quiet, please, Miss Dare, quiet. Teacher will know what a good girl you've been without you being so immodest. I'll tell him all about it. This is one of your nightclub's late patrons, Mr. Graven. Him? Yeah, I've seen him around. Been murdered, ain't he? I bet you don't know how or where either, do you? Me? How should I know? Your little pal, Marie Dare, told us how she called you and told you this detective was meeting me. She's put you right on the spot. Huh? I wasn't putting you on any spot, Joe. She was giving this detective all the dope on you. She was a spy. Taking pay from you and giving Lou Dane all the dope on everything that was going on around your place. And you told him you phoned me and told me about it? Why'd you say a thing like that, Marie? Because I did. Well, there must have been a couple of other people. You never talked to me. Oh, your protests of innocence 
are touching, Mr. Graben. But they're necessary. Nobody's going to hand me a rap for killing a dick. That is not the point. It is as far as I'm concerned. Our friend Betty, who seems to have been working for both of us, isn't going to give you the benefit of any doubt if this should come into court. Peter Harley was on your trail trying to get something on you. Yeah? Well, I didn't know about it. Betty, a member of a rival gang, was telling him anything that she could that would get you into trouble with the police. Marie Dare tipped you off as to what was going on. She never did. She did. She says she did. She has no apparent motive for lying. Peter Harley's been murdered. Do you think you would want the case to go to court, Mr. Craven? I suppose it's got to. No, not necessarily. Not if uh, you arrange for the right kind of a funeral. You mean you can cover this thing up? Such things have been arranged in the past, but... Uh, this is going to be an expensive lesson for you, Mr. Graven. Yeah? What do you mean? Somebody has tried to victimize me into putting out a free funeral. Hmm. This man died trying to uphold the law. A noble hero shot down in the prime of his life. He deserved last rites of genuine elegance. Okay. How much do you want? I should say about um, $50,000 should cover it very nicely. $50,000? Well, that's blackmail. Oh, but it will be a superb funeral. Flowers, spatial carpet at the cemetery, the red one, even the quartet. You'll guarantee I don't take the rap if I pay you the dough? When the Renfront Funeral Home takes charge of a funeral, I assume every responsibility. I guarantee you that you'll never be charged with Peter Harley's murder. Of course, Mr. Graben, you, uh, you will make the payment in cash in advance. Okay, you got your dough. I guess I can go now. Have uh, you finished counting the money, Harry? Yeah, yeah, 50 grand. It's okay. I ain't gonna forget the way you shook me down, Mr. Renfran. No, I don't suppose you will. Give me the money, Harry. Uh, here you are, boss. Thank you, Harry. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to dispense with your services. Huh? I mean, you're fired. But, but I ain't done anything, boss. I ain't... I could hardly have a murderer working for me, Harry. Particularly such a stupid murderer. What do you mean? Listen, I ain't murdered anybody. Hey, what gives? What's this all about anyway? Peter Harley came here last night and asked to see the body that was in the receiving room. He showed his police credentials, I imagine, and demanded to see it. No, he wasn't here. You took him back to the receiving room. You were panic-stricken because you thought you would be in trouble, that you would be implicated in the work we've been doing for Joe Graben. Ah, you're making this up. You've been receiving most of Mr. Graben's... Mr. Graben's cases at night. You thought you'd be in it up to your neck. So, you shot the detective. You killed him yourself. You... Hardly. Peter Harley and I were working together. You and Harley... Why, you dirty rat! When you, you brought your first case to me, Mr. Graben, I was scared to death. So I went to the police. And you got the nerve to admit it? They told me to play along with you, to tip them off. They've been building up a chain of evidence that will send you to the electric chair. Thanks to me. And you've been collecting from Joe Graben all the time? <laughs> Naturally, my dear. Even the gangster dead must have burial. I didn't kill Harley, I tell you. You did it yourself. You have a key, too. Yes? Try telling that to the police, Harry. I'm afraid you'll uh, irritate them. You see, Harry, they tipped me off a long time ago that you were one of Graben's boys, that you came to work for me because Graben had decided I was to be his undertaker. Then, then I'll confess that Graben told me to shoot Harley. Yeah. Why, you louse. Try to ring me in on your mistake, will you? You told me to do it. I'll stick to that. Unless you get me out of here. I can do that, all right. This gun will do the trick. Joe, you ain't going to shoot us. I ought to shoot Renfron. Taking my dough and then tipping off the cops, shaking me down for 50 grand? Come on, we gotta get out of here, Joe. You sap. Okay, come on. I got a key, Joe. We'll leave Renfron and the dames locked in here. Let them try to explain Peter Holly's body. Yeah. Oh, fine spot you got us in now. When the cop comes. My dear, I don't believe you realize how lucky you are that Joe Graben didn't shoot you. Really, I don't. If I weren't a law-abiding citizen, I would be tempted to do it myself. You played unfair with me, too, you know. Hey, what's that? The police. I had the place literally honeycombed with them. Oh, my, I hope the bullets didn't hit any of my precious objects dart. Ah, looks 
like most of them had Harry and Joe Graben. Yes, the wages of sin. But I suppose I really owe them free funerals. Yeah, complete with quartet. <laughs> Thank you. 